بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فقال عز وجل في محكم التنزيل وكذلك أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا وصرفنا فيه من الوعيد لعلهم يتقون أو يحدث لهم ذكرا فتعالى الله الملك الحق ولا تعجل بالقرآن من قبل أن يقضى إليك وحيه وقل رب زدني علما رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفكه قولي آمين يا رب Today I'm going to be sharing with you a poem written about 400 years after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the special feature of this poem, poem is that every couplet, every bait, ends with ta'alif. But this is a poem about an older man giving advice to a younger man. This younger man, his name is Abu Bakr. Scholars are not sure if it was his son, or if it was just a younger friend, or somebody he made up in his mind as somebody he's talking to in poetry. And this advice that this older man gives to this younger man is extremely important in the times that we live in. So this is why I decided that I'm going to talk about this poem. And the writer of this poem, his name is Abu Ishaq al-Ibari, rahmatullah alayhi. He was a great, you can say, zahid, a great servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so I'm going to start now with the poem. If this works, I will continue. If it doesn't work, then in the middle, I'll just stop and speaking on another subject, okay? Because I haven't done this before, so we're going to see how this goes. <clears throat> Bismillah rahman rahim And by the way, the subject of this poem is knowledge. And there's a reason I chose this particular subject of knowledge, as I will explain. But he is telling the younger one the importance of knowledge. Particularly from the perspective of when, when knowledge was respected. Nowadays, money is more respected than knowledge. And nowadays, the purpose of knowledge is to get money. So you can say knowledge is now at the service of money instead of money at the service of knowledge. So he said, Your heart, you know your heart is pumping X number of times. So your heart becomes weaker over time. You only, you know, uh, I think Hassan Basri, or one of the scholars, when somebody would tell him his age, he would say, no, that's how much you've lived, right? As in, you have, this is how much you've lived. It's not something to be proud of. This is just how much you've lived. And then he says, and then your jism has nahta. You know, you get wrinkles, you get older, you get signs that you're getting old. So your body is becoming weak. You're going to diminish. So this is how he starts his advice to this younger man. And death calls upon you with all truthfulness. It's as if another scholar in his poetry, he said, it's as if we were created to die. Right? You were created to die. That's what you were created. You created to die. And then he says, Ala ya sahi is actually sahibi. This is the only word in the Arabic language in poetry in which you drop the ba and the majrur of e. Okay, ya sahibi. So, ala ya sahi, meaning sahibi, oh my companion, anta urit ta'atata. That that death 
is desiring you. You are desiring it, and it is desiring you. You're made for each other. Okay, I see that you love the beautiful bride. Arusin Khidri, a beautiful bride, meaning he's using dunya as a metaphor of a beautiful bride. This is one of the interpretations. There are others, but I'm going to just use one because of this. I want to try to finish 60 couplets if I can. So we'll see how that goes. Araka tuhibbu arusin zata khidrin. I see that you love this bride, which is dunya. And he, but he says, Give her talaq bayin. Meaning give her a clear talaq, meaning give talaq to this dunya. And what he's giving here is a precondition to be a student of knowledge. We live at a time, those of you that come to the masjid must know, which is one of the reasons I'm talking about this today, that scholars are leaving dunya every day. You know this, you've seen this, you hear such and such great scholar passed away, such and such, well, what's going to happen? One of the signs of the, we have to replace, we have to revive the, uh, the sunnah of knowledge. Medina was a city of knowledge. All of us have to know knowledge. Everyone has to strive to learn. So this is one of the reasons uh, I'm talking about this. أَرَاكَ تُحِبُّ عَرْسًا ذَاتَ خُدْرٍ And then he says, Give her talaq. That's the smart thing to do. You'll be kayis, you'll be smart if you give dunya talaq. And then he explains the relationship between money and knowledge, as you'll see, and the relationship between knowledge and leaving dunya. تَنَامُ الدَّهَرَ the whole world, the universe is sleeping, meaning people are sleeping. The jinns and human beings are sleeping, so they don't see reality. Tanamu dahar, wayhaka fi ghatit. Woe upon you for that you're not only sleeping, you're snoring. Right? You're not only sleeping, you're snoring. The reality is you're going to die. So why are you paying so much attention to dunya when you know you're going to die? Why are you not learning what is going to actually save you forever? And then he says, wait, Haka, woe on you. And when you die, you will actually wake up. Because when you die, you know, a portion of the ghaib is opened up to you. A portion of the unseen world is open. Then, oh, darn, I should have been studying. I should have been acting upon what I was learning. Now it's too late. And one of the problems of the youth is they're not motivated to learn. They're not serious. One of the ways, the easy ways that I've seen people to get serious is to give them a taste of knowledge. What it feels like to get knowledge. So this is one of my attempts here today. He says, how long will you be duped and degraded? Right? And then he says, and how long will you not cease from being duped? That you, you've been created to die. But you're so involved in dunya, right? So Abu Bakr is the young fellow he's talking to. He says, Abu Bakr, I am giving you an invitation, answer my call. In this, for you is a great fortune if you did but have intelligence. What I'm asking you to do, to learn the deen. How many, know, how many people know the fara'id of salah? Forget about everything else. How many people know the sunnans of wudu? How many people know how to give proper zakat? How many know, people know the laws of inheritance? We are losing knowledge and the ulama are dying. And what's interesting is one of the things he does because he's talking to a young boy, he's also telling him what used to be, not now, what used to be the benefits of being an alim. What used to be what? The benefits of an alim. When I was in Israel in 1994, I went to Aqsa and I went to Palestine. What I realized is the rabbis, they were the most knowledgeable of their people. The rabbis were one of the only people in, in, in Palestine who knew how to speak English. The rest of the, um, the awam, the people, they didn't know English. They didn't, 
They weren't so conversant. He says, look, if you learn knowledge, he's telling this young boy, just like maybe someone did with Imam Malik one day because he used to like other things. So he says, if you learn knowledge, you'll become an Imam. And then what? Muta'an in nahita wa in amarta. And when you say, don't do this or do this, people will listen to you. يَجْلُ مَا عِينَكَ غِشَاهَا Or عَشَّاهَا Depending upon the version of the poem. He says, if you get knowledge, you will be able to see correctly. You won't be short-sighted in the way you look at things. You will be able to see things correctly. And then he says, وَيْهَكَ And then he says, And you'll be able to guide yourself when you've gone wrong. Because as long as you have knowledge, you'll know how to bring yourself back. But if you don't have knowledge and you went wrong, you're, you're not even going to know where to go. But at least if you have knowledge, you, you take the opportunity for teaching the young man today the knowledge, even if he goes astray tomorrow, he will know where and, where, where, where and how to come back. So he learns the knowledge from age 5 to age 10, and 15, 16, 17, he goes with the bad crowd. But later on in his life, he'll know where to come back. وَيَحْدِكَ إِلَىٰ طَرِيكِ إِذَا ظَلَنْتَ Then he says, He says, wherever you go in whatever crowd you go, whatever nadi, like Darul Nadwa, whatever sittings you go to, it'll be like you're wearing a crown. This is before, not now. Now we like money more than knowledge. وَتَحْمِلُ مِنْهُ فِي نَادِكَ تَاجًا And then he says, and you, it, your knowledge will be like beautiful clothings that are displayed for people to see. You'll reach the benefit of the knowledge as long as you're alive. And if you die, people will still remember you. Because of the, or you will be remembered because of the knowledge that you spread. Look at the great scholars of Islam, like Imam Nihajar, or Imam Nawi, or Imam Ghazali, or any of the great scholars, Imam Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullahi Ajma'in. Their knowledge, they're still remembered because of their knowledge. Right? You won't be remembered because you had money. Right? You'll be remembered because you had knowledge. He is like a sword made from India. India used to have a strong steel. Muhannadun is a sword from India. So, Laysa Yambu, it never mix, mix, mistakes its mark. When it strikes, knowledge is like a sword that when it strikes, we need scholars today that can cut off the philosophical underpinnings of secularism. We need scholars today that can cut off the underpinnings of liberalism. We need scholars today that can cut off the underpinnings of Western humanism, etc., etc., etc. We need scholars today that know how to, that are experts in doing da'wah to non-Muslims. <coughs> and it kills whoever his sword will kill, whoever he wants to kill. <coughs> From here now he compares knowledge to wealth. And you can say this is on the tradition of Ali radiallahu and he also did this. <laughs> knowledge is that treasure that you don't have to fear it being stolen. Right? Whereas money, especially in the olden days where you had coins and they were heavy and you had to carry them around. Easy to carry, it's, it's with you all the time, you don't have to do anything. <coughs> Knowledge increases the more you spend it. It's like when Allah said, what? In shakartum If you thank me, I'll give you more. If you give sadaqah, Allah will give you 
more. If you give more knowledge, Allah will give you more. And if you don't spread knowledge, you stop from giving knowledge, then Allah will take away that knowledge. And only, now listen to me, <clears throat> knowledge is like a drug. Knowledge is like what? A drug. It has a good drug part of it and a bad drug part of it, depending upon the person's intention. <clears throat> when you taste knowledge, it is like tasting money and power. And so when you taste knowledge and you, pers and you taste knowledge and you like knowledge and the knowledge benefits you and you see that because of my knowledge, people are respecting me. And because of the knowledge Allah gave me, I am able to do certain things. Then what happens? Then you want more knowledge. Just like if you have money and you see the benefit of the money, then you want more money. But he's saying this in the positive sense, that if you have good intentions. So he says, then he says, <coughs> And then you wouldn't cease learning and struggling to learn. If you get the benefit of knowledge and the knowledge comes into you, right? Then you see the benefit of it. Oh, I know how to do my prayers correctly. Oh, I know how to read Quran correctly, right? I know how to do da'wah to non-Muslims correctly, right? You see the benefit of it because of your da'wah, somebody became Muslim, for example, or somebody came, started praying five times a day. You see a certain benefit and then you want to learn more and learn more. And then what happens? Because of the love of knowledge, he says, لَمْ يَشْوُلْ عَنْهُ حَوَاءً مُطَاعًا you don't follow your base desires because you don't have time for it. Knowledge is that drug. Knowledge is that drug that will keep you from sinning. Because once you're into books, you know, a kitab sahibi, once books become your friends, there's no bigger drug. There's no bigger drug. And so that's one of the ways to stop yourself from falling into hawa is to fall in love with books. So he says, وَلَمْ يَشْغَلْ عَنْهُ حَوَاءٌ مُطَعًا وَلَا دُنْيَا زُحْرُفُهَا فُتِنْتَ And you will not fall into the fitna of dunya despite its beauty. But what do you have to do? You have to get knowledge. And once you finish knowledge and you learn and you see the benefit of knowledge and it begins to internalize in you, it changes the way you think and it tells you you don't have time to waste. Because there's so much more to learn. There's always more to learn than you know. Right? It's always, you always know one drop compared to a whole ocean. It's like, there's no, you know, from a perspective, it's, almost, it's, it's impossible. And nor, and he says, continuing about knowledge, if you get into knowledge, nor with its beautiful gardens distract you. Meaning of the dunya and nor the virgin women. <coughs> the ruh is fed by ruhul ma'ani, which is also a name of a tafsir, ruhul ma'ani, by the way. But the ruh is fed by knowledge, not by laysa bit ta'amika wala sharabika. So he says, persevere. Wajid minhu and be serious in this. There's a saying in Arabic, La al mujahid la ya'rifu illa jatta. A mujahid, a true struggler, knows nothing but seriousness. His life is serious. Right? And then he says, <laughs> And if Allah gives you the knowledge, look at all the benefits you can get. Look at all the knowledge. You know, I was once comparing, just as a side note, how much, no how much is the range of knowledge an average Muslim needs, day-to-day -day Muslim needs, 
how much knowledge a day-to-day Muslim needs versus how much like you need to understand the ummah, the complexities of the ummah, right? So if you take the knowledge that the ummah, an individual, every individual needs at least, you can say, six, seven hundred pages worth of knowledge. Six to seven hundred pages worth of knowledge. But if you look at the ummah and, and try to understand the complexities of the ummah, minimally you'll need three to four thousand worth of pages of knowledge to benefit the ummah. And if you received such a vast amount of it, right? People will say, oh, you're a scholar. They'll respect you because you're a scholar. Now, like I said, this person is talking to a young man and telling him you'll be respected because of knowledge. But at the same time, while there are benefits to in dunya of things of spiritual matters, that's not the real reason we're doing it. But these are the fruits of it, not the root of it, right? That's the fruit, that's the end result of it, not the root. And you won't get to the fruit unless your root is solid many times. So now here he says this, Don't be secure, that Allah will not ask you about the knowledge you learned. Right? But he says, Allah will rebuke you, meaning you will be rebuked. The knowledge, you learned, but did you act upon what you learned? Did you act upon it? So first of all, it's a fault upon Muslims to learn. Second of all, then if you learned, you have to act upon it. So it's a very serious matter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask us on the day of judgment, did you act upon what you learned? The head or the peak of knowledge is taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haqqan for sure. It's not that you be praised or be asked for like your, your acknowledged, not for acknowledgement. The best clothing a person can wear is the beauty of Ihsan, the beautiful character you carry. Right? But he says, but I see you, young man, the clothing you're wearing. He's not talking about the physical clothing, he's talking about his character. He says, I see you wearing like an evil cloth, your manners, your ill mannered. And this becomes clear in the poetry, which we're not going to go into today. But after he makes his nasiha, his son or the young boy says to him, who are, you, who are you to advise me? Who are you to advise me? You yourself have done this and done this and done this and done this. And so in the poetry, this is how he goes. And then he answers back. But we're only going to do 60 couplets today. He says, and if you do not benefit from your knowledge, any good, if you don't benefit from your knowledge, then it would have been better your jahil. Meaning you got knowledge and you didn't benefit from it, you didn't act upon it, you didn't become serious because of it, you didn't fall in love with knowledge. Right? Knowledge is an attribute of Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ loved knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ loved knowledge because it was an attribute of Allah. And if your understanding is faulty, he says, then he says, for way. He says, Laytaka, lay, woe upon you. You learnt knowledge and you still don't get it. Like you got the, you understand you're going to die and there's a day of judgment. You got knowledge and you still didn't get it. Then woe upon you. Destruction for you. So I'll just summarize this part. He says, when you get old and you have no knowledge, then even people will, you'll be like you're an absentee. No one will recognize you're there. No one can come to you and ask you any questions. What would be the purpose of becoming old and Muslim and you have no knowledge? Right? At least have knowledge by the time you're old. 
He says, if you think about what I'm saying, then one day for sure, you'll act upon what I'm saying. So that goes for the youth over here. If you think about this, then one day, if you think about this, if you absorb this, then one day, because it's not about Abu Bakr, right? Every young man is Abu Bakr. And he said, if you disregard my advice, and you just accumulate dunya around you, you'll have nadama. You'll have regret and regret and regret. And you see your companions there, you see them as, this, this phrase has many meanings, just get, but you, if you become a person of dunya, if you become a person of dunya, then you'll see everyone who's higher than you, materialistically. And therefore, by seeing everyone who is higher than you, where have you placed yourself? You've placed yourself low. So you see yourself low and everyone higher. But if you do it based upon knowledge, then it changes. Then you look at the people who have more knowledge than you, which is allowed to do. So he says, take yourself into account and stop procrastinating. And for the one who de delays, delaying will not make you reach your goal. And don't let money be your main concern. He says there's no wealth except knowledge that you have. That's the, that's the wealth you'll take into your grave. And the ignorant one has nothing to do. He, he doesn't benefit anyone. Even Iraq Even if the the land of this person who wrote this is from Spain. So Iraq was famous for its wealth. Even if you are the king of Iraq, right? There's a I don't have time right now because time is running out, but the one of the Khalifas, Khalifa Ma'mun, when he was young, he, he did not used to go to Madrasa. An event happened with him that he was young and his dad said to him, You don't like going to the Madrasa and studying? He said, No, I don't like it. He said, Okay, fine, don't go. And then when he grew up and he became the king, he couldn't speak Arabic properly. He couldn't what? He couldn't speak Arabic properly. He couldn't say basic words of Arabic properly. And people used to make fun of him in the court. And he was a king. And if you become knowledgeable, then even the greatest men will seek you out because of your knowledge. He says, what is the point of making big buildings? Making big buildings, what it will benefit to you when your own ignorance, your own lack of knowledge has destroyed yourself. And the other interpretation is, The buildings that you make will be destroyed because of your ignorance. You were jahil, ignorant, to make wealth on top of thinking wealth is more important than knowledge. How much people struggle for wealth nowadays versus knowledge? Well, you, and then he says, he says, Wallahi, by, umruk, by your life, I tell you this is not just, you didn't do justice if this is what you think. He says, the wahi, revelation from Allah, will tell you this truth if you read Surah Taha. And the ayah that relates to this in Surah Taha is the ayah where Allah says, وَقُرْ رَبِّي زِدْنِي عِلْمًا and Allah said, oh, the Prophet was given the dua, oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. 
اللهم زدنا يا ربنا علما And if somebody raises the flag of wealth, I got a lot of wealth, you'll be placed higher because of your flag of knowledge. And if you are a person of wealth, you will sleep on a mattress. But if you are a person of knowledge, you will sleep in the stars, in the planets. Right? Because your brain will not be in this dunya. Ruh will not be in this dunya. It will be in another place. And if, if somebody is riding very beautiful, the best of horses, you will be on the manhaj of taqwa. And being poor because of your knowledge, لا يضرك شيئا. If what إذا ما أنت رب قد عرفت. If you know your Rabb and you're poor, it's okay. إذا ما أنت ربك قد عرفت فماذا عنده لك من جميل إذا بفناء طاعته أنخت فقابل بالغبور لنصح قولي فإن أعرفت عنه فقد خسرت And he says in short that what beautiful delights Allah will have for you if you ride this horse of taqwa instead. And if you watch over what you do and over what you say, then you've done a great bargain, a trade with Allah. You did your small little actions and Allah gave you Jannah in its place. Whereas if you had wealth, you had wealth in this dunya, but you got nothing for it in the next world. فَلَيْسَتْ بِهَذِي الدُّنْيَا شَيْءٍ This dunya has nothing. And now he tells you, in this world is but tragedy for long times and happiness for short times. Tragedy affects stress and affects us long times. The impact of tragedy in life is a lot more than the impact of happiness. He says, if you think about it, this life is like dreams and shadows. I, there was another poem. كُلُّ مَا فِي كَوْنٍ وَحْنٌ أَوْ خِيَالٍ All that's in this universe is wahn. It's like wahn, some thoughts. Or khiyal, some thoughts or some ideas. It's like a dream. <coughs> You have been put in prison because you love this dunya. You've been put in prison because you love this dunya. And then he says, How can you love something that puts you in a prison? How can you love something that puts you in a prison? You eat from this earth, but soon when you're in the ground, the earth will eat from you. And you love this thing? And he says that, in, you know, in the hereafter, we'll have no clothes. And if you try to get, if you try to put clothes on this dunya of yours, you'll have no clothes in the hereafter. And every day you witness the dafan of your friends. We always think about, oh, look at the Muslims in Yemen dying, Muslims in Palestine dying. We don't think about ourselves. Right? And so he says, you see your friends dying. It's as if you didn't see what you just witnessed. Somebody dying should be like a big thing for you. You've not been created to build this earth. You've been created to abhor this earth. You've been created to, to travel like a bridge. You've been traveled to go over this earth, not to stay in it. 
فازدها أنت هجما وحصن أمر دينك ما استطعت ولا تحزن على ما فات منها. And I'm shortening it. Don't be don't be sad over what Allah takes from you in dunya. As long as in the Ukhra and the next world, Fusta, as long as you're successful in the next world, who cares about what you lost in this world? For none benefits what, from what the earth brings is temporary, and what the hereafter brings is eternal. Don't laugh with the foolish people. Soon you will cry if you were laughing too much. And what is it that makes you so happy when you have been put on rahan? Rahan means uh, like you are, you know, you pawn something and either the pawn keeper will keep it or, or give it back depending upon the situation. Either you'll be punished or you'll be let go. But you don't know your fate. So what's making you so happy? You're in this very difficult predicament. And this will be the last few couplets and we'll pray. Tawfiq is to, is, to have, is to have the ability to do good. Okay? And ask Allah Tawfiq that you're able to do good in this dunya while you're here for this short time. And be sincere in your su'al, in your questioning Allah or asking Allah when you ask Allah. And when you do sujood to Allah, do i'tiraf. Confess to Allah your sins like like Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, he did when he was in the will. Keep knocking on the doors of Allah. That's where knowledge takes you. Knowledge takes you to that point where you start knocking on the doors of Allah. And if you keep knocking, then inshallah, one day the door of Allah will open. Remember Allah much and then Allah will remember you with the angels. And don't think because you're young you won't die. How many small have been put into the ground? So we'll end here today, inshallah.